Hi folks, welcome back. This is a brief tutorial to help you understand the elements of a peer-reviewed journal article and to help you learn how to use those articles to your best advantage for this course. Now peer-reviewed research articles or peer-reviewed journal articles are articles that scholars, professors mainly, have written and published in peer-reviewed journals. Now, a journal is the word that academics use to mean the same thing as a magazine. It's a collection of articles that have been published uh, and are put out periodically throughout the year. Journals are usually put out four times a year, but they can be more frequent. They can be monthly, or they can be less frequent. They could be once a year. Every university discipline has its own set of journals. With regard to sociology, there are dozens and dozens of different journals that deal with sociological topics. So for a scholar to get their material published in a peer-reviewed journal, they have to send that out once they've done their research and written it up. They have to send it out to other scholars that are recognized in that particular area, and those scholars will read through the material, make sure that the research is sound, make sure that the article makes sense, make sure that all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, basically, and then they'll put their stamp of approval uh, on that particular article, and that's how peer-reviewed articles get published. This is the reason why they're considered to be the gold standard, because they are looked at and reviewed by so many experts in the field that they can be uh, considered to be the most credible information on that particular topic. So they can be a bit daunting. Uh, they're usually very long, 20, 30, 40, sometimes even 60 or 70 pages long. So what I want to do with this tutorial is give you a foundation for how to read these types of articles for this class so that you don't find yourself uh, bogged down in too many of the details that aren't going to be necessary. So what you're going to find when you start reading peer-reviewed articles is that they follow a certain order. And that order is very, very closely related to the scientific method or the scientific process, where in an article you're going to find an abstract or an introduction to the actual problem. In the scientific method, you state your purpose. That's stating the problem and defining the problem for your reader. Where in a research article you have a background or a literature review that's oftentimes labeled just that way. In the scientific method, this is where you start your research. You find out about the topic and report back to your reader the background on that particular research problem. In an article, you'll often find a methods or a research problem section. This lines itself up with the hypothesis and the experiment section of the scientific method. Reading peer-reviewed articles, you'll also find a data analysis or a results section, again, very closely aligned to the scientific method. And then finally, you're going to find in most articles a section that's either labeled discussion or findings or even conclusion. And that's going to line itself up also with the analysis of the scientific method and the conclusion also of the scientific method. So we're just going to take a quick look then at a peer-reviewed journal article that I've pulled up from the library database, and we're going to look and see if we can identify these elements, and I'm going to tell you how to work your way through those elements to your best advantage in this course. All right, now, it's not important that you can actually read the article as it's presented here in the tutorial, but what I do want you to be aware of here are the elements of the actual article itself. Now, as I said, I used our library's online database to locate this particular article. And when you do this, when you find a peer-reviewed journal article, what you're going to find is a cover page that has certain elements. The cover page is going to give you the title of the article, the author or authors, the journal that this was published in, in other words, the magazine that published this particular article, the volume number and the actual edition number of the journal, the pages that this appeared in the journal. You're going to also see the name of the database, 
that I access this article in. Now, let me just note here, this was published in the journal titled Demography. I accessed it in the online database JSTOR. That's going to be important information when you construct your citation, so you might want to take note of that now. So you're always going to find this information when you access an article within one of the college's online databases, and this is going to help you to construct your citation. All right, now, here's the actual article. Again, you see the title, the author, and then you're usually going to see uh, an italicized paragraph at the top. This is going to be your abstract. Now, the abstract is an important element for you to read because it recaps the entire article in a nutshell. It's not going to give you enough depth to be able to stop there, but it is going to help you to understand exactly what the author is presenting. So this is the abstract, and then you're usually going to launch right into the introduction or even into the background or literature review section of the article. Now here you can see that the author has launched into a background on income inequality. She goes into family structure change and economic trends, changes in poverty rates, changes in income equality. And then her next section is the data and methods section. This is that third section or following the scientific method, this is the area that corresponds to the hypothesis and the experiment. For this particular class, this is not the most important section. This section can be very, very technical. So I would say to you, uh, definitely skim it, but if it starts to get to be a little bit too much for you, don't feel bad to skip this section over. As you can see, it does start to get extremely technical with the statistical analysis here. All right, and then you see here the limitations of the research and then her results section. And so this is also going to be an important area for you, particularly the results area, because this is going to recap in plain English what all those statistics meant. You oftentimes here will see charts which will help you to understand the information that was analyzed. This author has done a really good job here of including some easy to understand information. You often also will start to see some statistical data represented in chart format or table format. Here again, I wouldn't spend a lot of time trying to understand this. Uh, this can be a little bit daunting to try and understand. Uh, so again, here uh, you could probably skip this information over. And then the end. You see here her discussion and findings. This is also an important section for you to understand. Here you're going to find a concise but meaningful recap of everything that was included in the research article, all of the data that was analyzed and what was found when the data were analyzed. And you'll see here that the discussion is the end of this particular article. So in other words, there's no additional conclusion to this article. However, I will tell you that if you do find a conclusion in an article that you're using, that is also an essential component. Uh, you'll find several appendices at the end of this particular article. And then you'll also find the reference section. Now, I have to tell you, oftentimes people don't even look at the reference section, but this is a very, very good place for you to go, particularly if you're in need of an additional research article, which will help you with your papers for this class. Oftentimes, if you'll skim through these here, you can find something else that will be of use to you that's also available in the online reference library. All right, so just a little bit of a recap here. So the important elements for you with regard to this class are going to be the abstract or introduction, the background or literature review, the discussion and findings, 
or the conclusion. If you can make your way through those sections of a research article at this stage of your education, folks, you're doing really, really well. And I don't want you to think that you're only going to see this kind of stuff in sociology classes. This is the gold standard across the board for all research disciplines, and it's a really good idea to get used to reading this kind of information early on because you're going to be exposed to it many, many times over in your academic career. Okay? I hope this helps. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. Take care. Bye-bye.